Aaron Keener, the first wave's prodigal son. An agent turned rogue, now fighting against that which he swore to protect. Keener's story is an interesting one, one filled with many questions. Why did he decide to go rogue? What are his plans after he disappeared from Manhattan? And where is he now? Collected field data in the form of left-behind phone recordings, CCTV footage and echoes is there to assist us in answering these questions. Keener had a privileged upbringing and never experienced any real adversity before joining the military. After he graduated from the Citadel, he served a tour of duty at Camp Lemonnier in Djibouti. He eventually left the military and took a job as a futures trader on Wall Street. Keener was noted to be a potentially prototypical candidate before joining the division due to his intellect and military expertise. He is adaptable and confident. He has a personable aura which he can use to manipulate others. When the Green Poison hit and Directive 51 got activated, it was Keener who was sent to central Manhattan alongside the countless of other first wave division agents. However, Keener wasn't only adaptable and confident, he was also ruthless. Early in the pandemic, he executes a man in cold blood after he finds him standing over an unconscious woman in an alley. Vanguard, grab your bag and proceed directly to Black Side Delta. And avoid engaging any hostiles. May as well keep a low profile while we have the option. Do that. Vanguard out. Black Side Delta? The fuck are you? CIA or some shit? Or some shit. As the situation in central Manhattan worsened, Keener was mid-operation, hunkered down in a joint task force or JTF safe house, protecting a small group of civilians from a group of Rikers. As the Rikers closed in on the group's position, Keener tried to radio evac, but his call was rebuffed by headquarters. The Rikers came closer and things took a turn for the worse. Are you listening to me? I brought these people out of the dark zone and we were followed. I tried to hold up in a JTF safe house, but the Rikers out there didn't back off. If you don't pull us out, these people are all dead. It's Lima Charlie Vanguard, but that zone is too hot for extraction. You'll sit tight and wait for their instructions. Angel 6 out. So that's it? We just wait to die? Not if I can help it. Everyone but Keener was killed. Civilians lied dead where they didn't have to be. This took a heavy toll on Keener. God damn it! I was there, I was right there. I could, I could have saved those people. I could have saved the whole fucking situation. Here's what I don't get. How do you recruit the best of the best and not allow them to do their fucking job? Son of a bitch! The thing is, we, we pull out now, we can't ever go back. The whole area just becomes one big dark zone. Totally lawless. Jesus, we're letting them win. Stop it. Stop being a pussy, get a fucking grip. Think, think, goddammit. Idiots. Motherfucking idiots. How dare they? How dare they? Okay. Okay. First of all, I owe myself an apology. Emotional outbursts are unacceptable, certainly unprofessional, no matter how provoked. So, I apologize. I forgive myself. I move forward. Good. Now the question of the moment, this, this betrayal, this changes things. Things have changed, this is clear. We have been lied to. We are sent to do a job. Things get tough. Suddenly, we're not allowed to do it. Rules are broken. Values discarded. A city abandoned. This is the truth. This is reality. The man behind the curtain. I have to tell the others. This was the critical moment that turned Keener rogue and led to all the consequential actions. The JTF were now part of a Manhattan that was behind him. He stumbled upon a group of Rikers who were executing a JTF soldier by hanging him from a digger. However, after killing the Rikers, he left the JTF soldier hanging. Let me help you. 
people act when all the rules break down. Predators, protectors, they start looking an awful lot alike. Hard to tell them apart, don't you think? As the field intel showed, Keener started recruiting first wave agents to his cause. However, not every first wave agent was ready to betray their country. A squad of first wave agents had been captured and were in the process of being interrogated by Keener. That is, until he lost his patience. So I gave you a chance to work with me and you decided you were going to turn me in instead. For God's sake, you don't have to do this. You need help, you've gone crazy. You're back talking to the guy with the gun. I'd say you're the crazy one. Me? I'm feeling real sane about things. Hang on, I'm just finishing up here. I'll be right over. Can't believe the bullshit that went down in the dark zone at the end there. I know. We had it. Everything I told them was dead on. They made us pull out anyway. And we left our dead behind. Yeah, we're not supposed to do that. Hang on a second. But we don't leave people behind. We're here to make sure this city doesn't get left behind. But the people we're working with, they're just fine. We're leaving all of us behind if it's convenient. Look, I don't agree with every decision that's been made, but I am saying it's time to leave them behind. Their model doesn't work anymore. If we're smart, we cut it loose before it drags us down, before it kills us. You're talking treason. I'm talking common sense. Look around, there's nothing left to save. The JTF is trying to save a Manhattan that doesn't exist anymore. It is all about power now. Power and survival. They are done, but I am not. And you won't be either. Not if you work with me. Although not every agent he tried to convince joined up with him, he managed to persuade some to do so. At this point, Keener received a connection to Colonel Lieutenant Charles Bliss from the Last Man Battalion, or LMB for short. Okay, progress report. I've spoken to several other agents about the division's betrayal. This wasn't easy given our cell structure. I only knew the agents in my cell. One was supportive, two were not. Every war has casualties, as I've been reminded. But the one led to others. I'm encouraged. Obviously not everyone will be persuadable, but a one in three success rate is more than expected. I also received an unexpected connection to Colonel Charles Bliss of the Last Man Battalion. I'm told his might be a friendly ear. I look forward to bending it. It was at this point that the entirety of the first wave was KIA or MIA and the second wave was to be activated by President Waller with Commander Louis Chang leading them. Keener couldn't let this happen. Progress report. Colonel Bliss proved receptive. A man of rare wisdom and insight. Not to mention a fine taste in single malts. New challenge. With most of the initial wave of agents either dead or playing dead, the division has apparently activated a second wave. Smaller than the first, it seems. Poor planning. For want of a nail, the war was... <laughs> I'm sure they're good people. Unfortunately, they can't be allowed to succeed, so we'll have to cut some assignments short. Nobody said saving the world was going to be easy. I think we need to modify the terms of our agreement. Why, Colonel? This seems to be working perfectly well so far. You get the support of my people and their gear with field intel you couldn't dream of six weeks ago. I get a base of operations, a place on what's going to be the winning side, and the occasional use of your manpower as needed. Not to mention the occasional surface-to-air missile. Or have you forgotten about that chopper in Brooklyn? Look, my people did the dirty work on that op bliss, and eliminating Division Senior Command was as much a benefit to you as to me. The last thing either of us wanted was 
was a senior division agent directing a second wave. Hang on, I'm getting feedback on the link. We've been compromised? Looks like. Cut in the link now. Now don't you. Progress report. It looks like the last man battalion's the best bet, at least in the short term. I've set up the line of communication with Lieutenant Colonel Charles Bliss, and it's proving mutually beneficial. There's a certain overlap of viewpoints there, and some shared ambition. He's a man who has a vision for this godforsaken rock, one that I can work with. We've already collaborated on one operation in Brooklyn, but taking down a helicopter is just a first step. Let's see how far this can go. It appeared to be Keener, with the material support of Bliss, was behind the elimination of Commander Chang. Although the second wave was still alive and planning operations, they had been severely slowed down, giving Keener time to work out his own plans. In the meantime, Keener did a little dinging on the virus and new ambitions were created. This is the start of the second phase in Keener's story, the one where he hunts down the creator of the virus and sees how he can turn it to his will. I've had an idea, and it's a good one. Let's think about the virus. What do we know? That it's similar to smallpox. Not smallpox, but similar. Which means it's a designated variation. Smallpox is the base on which a designer made alterations. Now, live smallpox exists in only two places. DCD and Russia. The base virus had to come from one of them. DCD? I would have heard if their security had been breached. So, Russia. Now let's think about the designer. Are there virologists with connections to both New York and Russia? In fact, there are two. One's Russian, one's American. A little research tells me both were in New York on Black Friday. Thank you, Shade Tech. Let me rethink things a little. Did some more digging into our two virologists, specifically their work. That's where things got interesting. Now, if I'm reading Chernenko's abstracts right, there was no need to steal the smallpox, not when it had already been decoded and digitalized and set up to be tucked into an email like any other attachment. And that digital genome was just sitting there, waiting for someone with the right know-how and the right equipment and the right imagination to make it live. This this version of New York is just a start. The possibilities are endless. Is there a limit to what can be done? Let's find out. I don't get it. You think there's maybe enough virus going around right now? It's all about the leverage. If I've got my hands on the dollar flu starter kit, this green poison that someone cooked up, then certain people are going to be a lot more reluctant to take a run at me. A gun's a lot better for self-defense than a weaponized virus. Stop thinking small. Start thinking possibilities. There's no medical infrastructure anymore. It's the Wild West out there, but less civilized. Being able to turn certain death loose at any time I want puts me in a powerful position. And controlling the core ingredients for a vaccine, that's useful too. So you might kill even more people. Who's gonna notice? It's not the killing. It's the threat of being able to kill. And giving them the hope they might be saved. The way things are breaking down out there, all these different groups carving their own territories out of what used to be civilization. It only makes sense to have an ace in the hole. Based on the research he did with Shaytac, Keener managed to track down the source of the virus to two possible virologists, Gordon Amherst or Vitaly Chernenko. Soon enough, a distress call from Chernenko was broadcasted and it could be traced back to the Russian embassy in Manhattan. Although the second wave division agents were on site, Keener's right hand man managed to kidnap Chernenko back to the United Nations headquarters, the base of operations for the LMB. In the meantime, Keener managed to track down Amherst's lab, hidden in an apartment. It was a simple setup, but Keener got what he came for. Amherst's notes, a fire sample from the 3D DNA fabricator, and now also a virologist that knows how to use it. Well, here I am, Aaron Keener, the first wave's prodigal son. Normally I'd do this face to face, but I'm not 100% sure which way it'll jump. You act one way when Ms. Lao is watching, and another way entirely when you're off the leash. That's an interesting contradiction. 
You see, I think that deep down, you get it. You know, the old rules, laws, governments, those things died on Black Friday. But the feral PMCs, the convicts, the ones smart enough and good enough to take what they need, they'll survive. Me? I'm gonna prosper. Oh, you could too, but you took an oath, right? You got a duty. Those are both ways of saying that your conscience is fucking you. You ask yourself, who has earned a right to tell you what to do? Do you know how many agents died? The whole the dark zone, just for the brass to give up and put a wall around it. You don't believe me? You should check the place out for yourself. But the people you're working for, they're irrelevant now. Amherst changed how the game is played, and I have got the vision to win. I got Chernenko, I got a DNA printer, and a very interesting recipe book. I'm gonna write my own rules. You should think about getting in on this thing. I'll be seeing you. After throwing the necessary materials in a duffel bag, Keener met Chernenko at the United Nations headquarters. Not long after, the JTF and the division launched an offensive on the headquarters. Keener saw the LMB were through and left the premise by helicopter with the duffel bag and Chernenko. Bliss, the LMB, they're over. I'm getting our immunologist out of here. Engage the division personnel on site and muddy up their tactical read. We'll run over later. Sir. Sir? Although unsure what Keener's plans are, Isaac assessed Keener's action and came to the conclusion that there is a high probability that he'll attempt to advance Amherst's work. It's unsure whether he will use it or only use it as a threat. However, as we started to explore the west side pier of Manhattan, we discovered left behind phone recordings, purposefully left behind by Keener. Not only to divert the attention of the JTF and other faction, but also to explain or perhaps confuse us with his messages on his future plans. Hello, this is Aaron Keener. Now don't tell me you've forgotten me. I'm the bad guy, remember? Oh, I didn't cause any of this, but if you ask the JTF, I sure as hell made it worse. Of course, if you're asking the JTF for anything besides some bottled water, you got bigger problems. But the news is simple. I'm alive, I'm real, and I'm not done yet. Not by a long shot. Anyway, I hear you've been looking for me. Does Lau know why? Do you? And right about now, I'll bet you're wondering if I was ever even here on the west side. The answer is yes, I was. You can look for me all you want, and so can those morons with the golf clubs and the flamethrowers. But you will never find me. More questions? Oh, I'm sure you got dozens of them. Like, uh, why the west side? It's easy enough, I needed a few things, and central Manhattan had been picked clean. And why let the factions know I was here? To get them to chase me and the JTF to chase them and pull their eyes off the prize. And what's my end game? Well, that I am not telling. But don't waste time getting indignant. Instead, let's talk facts. You are not going to catch me. Not even close. Let's put that another way. If you had even the faintest shot at getting a hold of me, do you think I'd be taking the time to send you a message? Both of us are smarter than that. But at least I've got your attention, and that's all I want. For now. The quarantine as it's set up is good. Good at keeping idiots on the island. Oh sure, the Coast Guard's watching the water and the JTF's guarding the bridges and the tunnels, but the thing is this. The weakest component in any system is people. All it takes is one guy who'll take a bribe, one optimist who thinks he's smarter than everyone else, one desperate mother or father who'll do anything for their kid, and the whole system breaks down. And that one little slip, that one tiny crack, that's all I needed. And now, I'm gone. 
there's a whole wide world out there for me to take a big bite out of. Now, maybe you can figure out just how I did it. Maybe you'll decide to do the same one day when you get tired of fighting an endless fight for people who just aren't worth it. When that time comes, maybe you and I can work together after all. Just one last thing. If you ever get off this rock, don't come looking for me. When I need to, I'll find you. This was all we've heard of Keener since. At least until six months later we discovered more intel in Washington DC. A distress signal called us to DC. While taking back the capital, block by block, agents found phone recordings in the field, phone recordings of Keener. Hello, Aaron Keener here. I, you might remember who I am, you might not. Either way, it doesn't matter as I'm more important to the current scenario than you are. I've got the virus printer old Amherst used to create the green poison, and I've got Vitaly Chernenko, who just happens to know how to use it. So chase me if you dare, but think about what might happen if you get too close. No promises, but I do value my freedom more than I value your life. I'll bet you're wondering why I haven't come calling to your neck of the woods. <laughs> I expected more patience out of you. Are you really that eager for a chance to join up with me? Or do you just want to know what I'm going to do next in the hope you can do something about it? Uh, here's a hint. You can't. Don't ever think you can outsmart me. Accept that and you'll live longer. They say home is where the heart is. And they also accuse me of being heartless, which I guess means I'm homeless. Either that or they are full of shit, which I consider to be much more likely. Still, New York might come back. I honestly don't know. Maybe because it's the heart of it all where this brave new world of ours got started and I want to stay close to the center of things. Maybe I got tired of seeing the same crap everywhere else I went. There is nothing majestic about the aftermath in some bedroom community in North Jersey. Uh, new York, on the other hand, well, there's still something magic about it even in the middle of all this. It's enough to keep you coming back. I wonder what I'm gonna do with my friend Vitaly. I can't keep dragging him with me everywhere, but I need that little touch of expertise he brings to really use the virus printed to its full potential. Assuming, of course, that I'm going to use it, which is no sure thing. Don't get ahead of yourself when you're trying to figure out what I'm gonna do next. It'll only get you in trouble. Now, where was I? Okay, right, Vitaly. Uh, he's behaving himself, mostly. He tried to escape once. I explained to him why that was a bad idea. Now he does what I tell him to, which is really much safer for everyone. For certain values of safe, anyway. In a way, it's a shame the quarantine isn't still up on Manhattan. It would have been a challenge for a minute or two trying to sneak back in. But it was all gone. The boats, the barricades, everything. Hard to blame the boys for giving up when everyone else had given up on them. Killing is easy. Notice I didn't say killing people is easy. If you think of them as people, it suddenly gets that much harder. But if you simply look at the balance sheet, uh, how much of an obstacle someone is or how much benefit there is in letting them keep breathing a while longer, then it becomes simple math. And simple math is simple to do. It's almost as easy as putting two bullets center mass and a third one in the head. I understand people are afraid I'm gonna print up another virus with the help of my friend Vitaly and turn it loose. What would I call it? Greener poison? The ruble flu? <laughs> That's an interesting exercise. The question you have to ask yourself is, what's in it for me? Do I get more out of giving one more shove to a world teetering on the brink of collapse than I do from letting some of the systems try to reset? Or do I stir the pot to ensure maximum chaos? You think you can guess what I'm gonna do from that? Good luck. Because maybe, just maybe, I haven't decided on my next move yet. Or maybe I have, and this is all a smokescreen designed to get you running in circles. Someday you'll get to ask me yourself. 
That is, if you don't make me kill you first. You might be wondering why I'm leaving these. Perhaps it's a deep-seated need for confession. But then again, maybe not. I haven't done anything I'm not proud of, and I have no need to seek absolution from anyone, least of all you. Maybe I'm bored. It's hard being one step ahead of everyone else, and this is my way of giving you a little bit of a helping hand to make things more challenging. Of course, that's the sort of thing made-up villains do. Nah, I'm perfectly happy to maximize my advantage. Or maybe I just want to get you spinning in circles. Now check for yourself, are there subtle contradictions in what I've told you? Is it hard to figure out what I'm trying to tell you? Maybe that's the point. Then again, maybe it isn't. These depth drops are left behind by Keener. Their purpose remains a question. Narcissistically, Keener brags on his achievements and plays mind games to confuse others on his next step. The interesting thing is that, although he always works against us, it never clearly stated what his agenda is. We could guess of course, but like he said himself, maybe he hasn't decided on his next move. Although his future plans are unsure, it's almost certain he's bound to show up in the near future. His story is undoubtedly intertwined with ours and that of the Black Tusk. How he fits into all of this remains to be seen, but with the threat of another green poison and the broad spectrum antiviral that was designed in Ann Arbor, Michigan, at some point he will have to show his face. Like he said, someday you'll get to ask me yourself. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed the character brief, I would like to ask you to like or dislike, share, subscribe, and click the notification bell to become part of the Masterminds HD community and notification squad. On top of that, you can follow me on Twitter for daily updates and join my Discord if you're looking for an engaged community that revolves around Tom Clancy Division 1 and 2. Both links are in the description. Visit my Patreon page through the link in the description if you're interested in the intro briefings on each faction or character with the summarized information from this video. To end the video, I have a question for you. What do you think Keener is planning on doing with a 3D DNA virus printer, Amherst Nodes and Chernenko? Leave your answer in the comment section down below and I'll make sure to get back to you. Talk to you in the next video on Discord or on Twitter. Peace out.